Welcome back to In the Can. We're talking today about the film Trophy. It's a documentary that's showing here at Sundance. We're talking with directors Christina Claudio and Shaul Schwartz. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Tell us a little bit about Trophy. It's a, it's a pretty emotional film. It is. You know, we, we got into this film. I didn't know much about hunting, and I found myself just flipping on pictures online f almost four years ago to see a man posing with an elephant he had just shot. I was just angered, and I, 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 I couldn't believe someone would do that. And Christina, who grew up not as a hunter, but in hunting in middle America, and knowing so well hunting, said, well, you know, it's a little more complex than you think. And so we got into a discussion and quickly started looking into the subject, and I was surprised how much we would learn, and that kind of led to the beginning of making a trophy. And Christina, it is much more complex, because I went in, as most people will, with preconceived notion, and you love the animals. But it's much more difficult than that. Yeah, it's very much in the gray. You know, you think about hunting, and you have your preconceived notions of what it is and what it isn't. Right. And I think we did, too, coming in. But as we continued on the journey of creating the film, it was amazing how much this world just opened up from the hunting side and then looking more in the breeding side and looking at the conservation side and all these things. And you really live in the grays between the two worlds. How did you put it together? How did you, what was your reception from the people that you wanted to include in your film? We wanted to empower, we wanted to talk, you know, again, we came from kind of this left side of not understanding it. So we wanted to make sure we're giving a voice to people who believe in putting a value to an animal, in a sense, commodifying it. Um, and, you know, they were the center stage. We talked to the other side. We didn't want to mock them and be cheap to them. We did want to be, you know, I think a journalist should always listen to the side and be curious to people he doesn't necessarily agree with. And so that was kind of our foundation walking in, to understand why they believe in it and to try and get past this thought of how can it make sense that you need to kill something to preserve it. It just emotionally doesn't sit right. Difficult to tell the story when you obviously have your own emotions and feelings about it. Right. Um, were you trying to make it objective? Did you actually have a point of view that you're trying to put across with this film? I think we weren't necessarily trying to have a point of view, but instead, again, live in the grays and understand and empathize with all the characters that we brought were part of the film and understand both sides of it because it is a complex issue. And, you know, it's like two religions. There's one side that believes in one thing and the other side that believes in it. It's a very polarizing subject, and everybody has their own emotions attached around it. So I think it was important to realize that there are these two sides, but how do we get these two sides to meet in the middle? Because at the end of the day, it's about conservation of animals. It's about our relationship to animals. So it was a, it was a very, it was an interesting journey, this whole, the whole process. Really powerful, really emotional, and we know that you brought a trailer along, so we want to take a look and show people a little bit of trophy. Take a look. So this movie, and there's one particular sign, scene that I cried all the way through, and I have to imagine that you, as animal lovers as well, had a difficult time Elephant. watching some of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was very difficult. I think you're referring to a scene where Philip hunts an elephant. Yeah. Um, it was the hardest thing for us to mm. film. Yeah. We were very emotional. We were both broken by it. Uh, I still remember what's not in the film. The uh, it, elephants are very social creatures. So there was really a big family, and I remember the other elephants crying as they ran away. And I just, we just broke down. Um, and it, it's very weird because we went on this hunt day after day expecting this to happen because that's the reason he's there. And yet somehow it shocked us mm -hmm. both because it happened so quick. Um, and then to go up beyond that, it also was an interesting turn when the villagers came. And so there's this elephant and you're grieving over this elephant in a way, but then... Villagers came, came and collected the meat and we could see that they were actually happy. And again, it's that perspective that confused us along the making of this film to be careful it's that not it's not black and white and to let your heart overpower mind is this strange dynamic. So was your goal with the film then just to present the issue or um, what kind of response are you hoping to get, expecting to get? You know, I think one of the responses is we hope is the audience comes in with their own relationship to animals, their own preconceived notions of what trophy hunting may be, what breeding may be, and they leave with perhaps more questions than answers. And then with that, we start a dialogue between these two worlds. I mean, in the end, it's really about our relationship to animals. It's really about conservation. It's really about breeding. It's about all these things. But 
there's no right or wrong solution per se. It's more about how do we start this discussion? How do we have a conversation? And a lot of that conversation started, and you said that you had started filming this before the Walter Palmer, the Minnesota dentist who killed Cecil the Lion, but you'd already started before, but that really did start a huge conversation about the issue. Yeah, it, we, we saw outrage generated to a whole new sure. level and a ton of pressure on this industry. Um, <laughs> and and it, was, it was funny because I was like, well, if I wasn't filming already and in the subject, I'd just be flat out mad. Right. And the truth is, it can anger you and it's okay to have an opinion that you should not do this, but Walter Palmer, I mean, they did shoot a line that had a collar and that's clearly something you shouldn't do. But just to be clear, when you hunt, you have something called a PH, a professional hunter. And as a hunter, you're really in their hands. So to be honest, he didn't do anything wrong. It yeah. was a legal hunt and, and that angers people even more sure. in a weird way. But you know, again, like, I think it's important to spark the con the ta people talking about this and understanding that just anger is not going to solve issues because I do really believe that on all sides people want to see this trend of animals declining change sure. and we don't have that much time. It's a scary thought. It is yeah, a it scary is. thought. It really is. So the movie is debuting tonight at 5.15 at uh, Prospector Theater, yes. right. but you can get tickets all week long, and I'm sure you're gonna, this is gonna spark a lot of conversation. A lot of we tissues, so. I think, will That's be coming good. out, but um, thank you for making this film an important one, and congratulations on bringing it here to Sundance. Thank, thank you so you. much. Absolutely, thank you. And that's it for this uh, wonderful interview with Trophy. We're talking about Trophy here on In the Can. Be right back. be 
a uniting factor to create a dialogue. Not really, no. That really empowers change. All we, through lawyers we, and we need Department to talk of more. Not, FBI, like on group. many issues, it's sure. true. Yeah, on this issue, is not one like, side has the whole truth. Did making them feel really like, no. mind any about trophy yeah. like, no, use the deep end. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, when news stories are breaking that this is, you know, Putin's pu number one enemy, yeah. there's no Skyping in. I mean, there will definitely be FSB agents at our screenings. So I knew that the world existed. For certain, certainly today. Certainly today. They're there. So it's interesting to walk into and see how it seems like a huge industry and all the things that come with it. You know, you have the safari hunts, you have the clothing, you have people saving money in order to go on these hunts. And so I think the perspective is just that it opened a whole entire world around trophy hunting that I don't think either of us knew existed. It really is crazy money when you're talking about how much money these hunters are paying to bring back that animal home. Yeah, a rhino, for example, could go up to $350,000. Yeah. But, you know, you do have to look at it that the more they pay, the more there's a chance that that money will trickle down to do good stuff. Did you find that to be true? It's not always true, and mm -hmm. I think that's something that hunting has to live up to. On paper, as confusing as a sound, there is a case to be made, and on some occasions on the ground, it's true. But definitely, I'd say the biggest problem with hunting is getting through the corruption in Africa and right. making the money trickle down to where it needs to be. Because they don't have money. This is a way for them to make money. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We need to give African people a way to help us conserve. If we just come in there with our way of thinking and they don't have any interest in it, it won't work. So I think on that level, hunting just as like photo safaris, and there's many other ways to conserve, but we have to remember that sitting here and saying, oh, let's just conserve lions or elephants, when you go to a village in Africa, you really quickly understand that elephant means meat or ivory, poaching money for opportunity for them and lion and they destroy their crops and lions eat their children and so the perspective changes really quick and we have to understand that we need to get in the mindset of local people to help them do this. It's also interesting the fact that you pointed out in the film that 70 percent of the trophy hunters are coming from basically North America. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? Did you go into a little bit more of the dynamic of that or the thought process of that? I think it's yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to the same thing that we had been talking about, is that it, it, for many Americans, the idea of hunting is a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. You know, at the beginning of the film, we have a scene with a father and a son. Yep. And it becomes circular, because at the end of the film, they, Philip takes a journey to hunt the big five. Mm -hmm. But everybody starts from somewhere. And I think that idea, you know, has transcended, and there's been this demand. And then there's created this industry that supplies the demand. And so I think it just, it's interesting how it's very much American driven, but I think it comes from that very basic relationship to animals and the rite of passage.